Within Christian circles, we often find superstitions that seem biblical, but in fact are myths. Now, let me be clear. If you followed the ministry for any length of time at all, you know that I unapologetically preach the Word of God. You know that I believe in God's healing power, the gift of speaking in tongues, spiritual warfare, the reality of angels and demons. I believe in the supernatural. In fact, most of my critics are of the belief that I'm too extreme and that I too often emphasize the power of the Holy Spirit. If you've been to any of my ministry meetings, you know that the Holy Spirit moves freely. People are saved, healed, and delivered. Having said that, we must come to terms with the fact that not every supernatural experience or spiritual belief is founded upon truth. This is why we shouldn't form our beliefs around feelings or experiences. We should form our beliefs upon the truth, the Word, the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk to you specifically about a myth concerning spiritual warfare. I want to talk to you about this idea, this lie that Christians can be under a generational curse. Now, a generational curse is a demon or spiritual bondage that is passed down from one generation to another. It can also be defined as some kind of punishment from God that comes upon people because of the sins of their former generations. Now, in some sense, this is a reality. Behavior begets behavior. Upbringing creates mindset, which repeats upbringing. But there is a difference between a cycle and a curse. I believe in generational inclinations, generational patterns, and even in generational behaviors. For example, alcoholic parents often raise children who will grow up to be alcoholics. In choosing to repeat the decisions of their parents, they open themselves to the same habits. But this idea that the believer can be under some kind of demonic or dark influence because of the choices of their parents is just not biblical. So from where does this idea come? Partially, people believe this because of personal experience. In repeating the decisions and cycles of their former generations, they sometimes look for somewhere to place the blame. But again, experience isn't always the best foundation for truth. Another source of this belief is poor biblical interpretation. Here's one of the more often used verses that believers use to justify a belief in generational curses upon Christians. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Now, at a glance, that verse seems to indicate that generational curses are a definite reality, almost. Notice that in the verse, there is a condition laid out, namely, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. This verse and all of the Old Testament verses that are similar have something in common. They are all set to a larger backdrop of choice. In other words, by repeating the choices of former generations, one becomes susceptible to similar consequences and punishments. There is no blanket statement in all of Scripture that should cause us to accept this idea that God curses believers based upon the choices of previous generations. If God cursed believers for generational sins, wouldn't praying against such curses be working against God's will? Does God have to fight with Himself to liberate you? No. So in fact, the Bible does not teach generational curses, but it definitely teaches generational consequences. The person who sins is the one who will die. The child will not be punished for the parent's sins, and the parent will not be punished for the child's sins. Righteous people will be rewarded for their own righteous behavior and wicked people will be punished for their own wickedness. That's Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. So then God does not hold us accountable for the decisions of others, even if they are the decisions of our former generations. God deals with each individual on the basis of the decisions that they make. Some believers look for exterior circumstances to blame for their current spiritual state. They don't want to take responsibility for their own sins. But the good and the sobering news is that God holds the individual accountable. Do you know why you sin? It's because you love to sin and you choose to sin. Do you know why you can't fully commit? It's because you choose to not fully commit. A lack of prayer, holiness, worship, or devotion to God's Word 
isn't a generational curse, it's a choice. It's easier to blame some exterior or demonic force working against you than it is to repent. That is deception. Yes, demonic powers work against you, but you've been given authority over them. The good news is that your decision to accept the free gift of salvation has the powerful consequence of broken curses. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. It's Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ broke the curse. There's no ritual to perform, no series of fancy prayers to recite. You're free if you'll just walk in that freedom. As a child of God, you've been given the power to rise above whatever the enemy might try to throw at you. For the believer, every curse was broken the moment they were redeemed. So then, when it comes to generational curses, the only power any curse might have is your belief in its power over you. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your Moment of Truth. For more free teachings like this, just sign up to my emailing list and I'll send you a weekly teaching that will bless your life. It's absolutely free, davidhernandezministries.com slash email. Join my emailing list today. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.